Monkey's bum. <laughs> yup, you seen it right. Because that is the name do exist in the official chess database. And whether you like it or not, you really want to play this opening. Because imagine if you beat your friend, enemy or opponent with this wonderful gambit. Then you have a lifetime chance to say about it that look, I have beat you with my monkey's bow. So without the further ado, let's get started. After e4 and g6, the main move in this position is d4, but our favorite gambit start with bishop to c4, immediately looking at the f7 square. And the interesting point is, after bishop to g7, we play like a pure beginner, queen f3, where we are looking for the scholar's mate on f7, if allowed. And guess what? Here we introduce our first trap, yup, at just third move of the game, that if your opponent continue with some natural moves, let's say knight to f6, then after e5, you are going to win the piece at just fourth move of the game. Isn't that amazing? Well, the knight cannot move because of the f7 mate. And if black goes for the counter attacking such as d5, then you can take the knight hitting the bishop. So more or less black has to take this pawn. And after bishop takes d5, if you count the material, yes indeed, white emerged with a piece at one. So that is a small trap if your opponent continue with knight to f6 at this position. Okay, more or less everybody will spot it and they are going to defend this position accurately with e6. And after this, here comes the super surprising and yet very aggressive gambit and that is d4, a starting point of our wonderful attacking chess gambit. Okay, black has few options. And in our first part, we are going to look at what happened if your opponent take this pawn with the bishop. And in my next episode, we are going to look what happened if black decline of a gambit. Okay, bishop captures d4, accepting the gambit. And white's big point is he wants to play knight to c3 so that for a one pawn loss, he get a tremendous peace development and our next target is to play knight to e2 and attack this bishop where black is going to lose more time in the opening. Okay, as per the database, there are few choices and amongst them bishop to g7 is by far the most popular response. However, in case if you are wondering what happens if your opponent take this knight, well then we can simply recapture with the queen. And now as the dark square bishop disappear from the board, look at the squares around the king side. They are severely weak and with the bishop pair, white has a tremendous compensation in this line. So nope, that's not a good idea by the black. The correct choice is to play bishop to g7, saving your most important pins. And after this, okay, many of the games continue with other moves, but we are looking for the more attacking option. And accordingly, h4 fitting to the correct response. The idea is very obvious. We want to play h5 and rip apart the black king side. So accordingly, black has few choices. The most natural here is to play h5 and stopping white's idea. However, black can try other moves such as knight to c6. But in that case, white attack will remain very strong on the king side. So let's start the most famous choice, namely h5, stopping white's whole idea. And not to worry, as we are going to continue with this very tricky move, bishop to g5, which sets up for the platform for yet another sum of the trap in line. For example, black can already go wrong if he continue moves such as knight to e7 or f6, 
as this leads to the disaster. Let's find out how. If knight to e7, then we can play bishop to f6. And more or less, black has to take this bishop because if he plays any other moves, let's say castle, then we can take on g7. And after king takes g7, yup, you guessed it, a very simple idea that is g4. And all white want to do is castle on the queen side and then become hell loose with capture on h5 where black's open king gives white all sorts of fun in this line. So nope, that is right out of the equation. That means black has to capture this bishop. But after queen takes f6 and rook to g8, white has a very simple idea to execute, namely castle on the queen side and the target weak king sitting in the center. Well, would you believe the most natural move in this position, knight to c6, leads to the blunder? Yup, you heard it right. Because after this, white has just one move and that finished the game, namely knight to f3, where knight is coming on g5 and f7 is a clear-cut target. And surprisingly, even though black can see this one is coming, unfortunately, he cannot do anything about it. For example, after d6 and knight to g5, there are two ways black can defend this position, but neither of them can save the game. If they play knight to e5, then the simplest is you play f4, allowing them to capture your bishop. But in return, after queen takes f7, king to e6, queen captures e6, and king to e8, white can simply regain the piece and become a pawn advantage where black king is stuck in the center for the all sorts of attack. So nope, knight to e5 is a big time blunder here guys. So let's check out the other move, namely rook to f8. Well, this time around, even the worst new strike after queen to g7 where white has idea of knight to h7 and nabbing the rook, something which black has to prevent immediately. And there is a game of grandmaster from this position where black continue with knight to g8 and after knight to h7, black plays queen to e7, at least trying to defend the rook. But sadly enough, the lightning strike from the different direction and Grandmaster was in really attacking move, so he played the right idea, knight to b5, looking at the juicy c7 square. And in fact, the game finished very quickly. After f5, white plays knight capture c7 check, and king to d8, we have some forcing captures. Queen takes e7, king takes e7, and white has a luxury to pick which rook he wants to eat first. And after this, obvious enough, the game doesn't last long as knight takes f8, king takes f8, and knight captures a8. Black realizes he lost two of his rook and he has nothing to play, so he resigned the game. So this sort of fun happened when your opponent plays the passive move, knight to e7. The second move, f6, is equally very bad here because now when white retrieves the bishop, he has a clear-cut target, namely g6 pawn. And in the long run, this gives a great headache for the black king. For example, recently I was fortunate enough to get this position and this game will show you how easily you can crush your opponent with some good preparation. Okay, black plays knight to e7, trying to castle. I simply responded with castle on the queen side. And white already has a threat. So for example, if a careless opponent continue with knight to c6, then bishop captures e6, gives white a great advantage. So that means here, more or less, black has to stop this threat. 
And the only way to stop this is by playing d6, not allowing bishop takes e6. But after all this, just look at this position. Black has wasted so much time moving this pawns, and accordingly, white can exploit it very quickly. I think you already guess white's next response. Yup, this very important lever, g4, gives him a nice edge at the opening stage. Well, my opponent first captured on g4, and after queen takes g4, he lash out with e5, a discover attack to the queen. But after queen to f3, the disaster is not far away, as after knight to c6, rightly so, h5 appear on the board, and after this, black position is completely collapsing. Well, he tried f5, trying to trap down my bishop, but after pawn takes g6, rook takes h1, queen takes h1, and f4, White has a fantastic shot here, namely bishop f7, king to f8, and then the sacking the whole piece with queen to h7, where black king really remains in a pathetic position. Well, my opponent was very greedy and he captured this piece, but this is just asking for it, as after pawn takes e3, white pieces are just literally coming near to the black king, and there is no way in the world black can hold on to this position. So I think this model game and ideas gives you enough information how you can play against the move f6. Last but not least, what to do if your opponent continue with bishop to f6, which I personally think is the best response. And against this, I am going to recommend a straightforward approach, and that is knight to h3, defending of a piece. White's big time idea is, let's say any black move, knight to c6, we wants to castle on the queen side, and then become hellos on the king side. And if you carefully look at this position, white has almost all the pieces out, and the rooks are connected where black is really struggling with the king sitting in the center. Okay, there are already few ways black can go wrong here, and amongst them, the number one is knight to d4. Can you see why it's next move? Yup, simple one, rook captures d4, and that bishop is a complete pin. So we are piece up and winning, and that's the reason why knight captures d4 is not possible. What about other knight move, let's say knight to e5? Well, again, not to worry. We can calmly play queen to e2. And after knight capture c4 and queen capture c4, this time around, white has a threat of knight to b5 and looking at the c7 square. So black has to stop it. But that run into the different problem, namely e5, bishop to e7, and then knight to e4 where our knight is going to launch on this juicy d6 square, something which gives black a big time headache for the rest of the game. So considering all this, probably the best option here is to play the move d6. But after white's next reply, that is rook h to e1, white has just a dream position where its rooks are centralized and every piece on the optimum square and it is just a matter of time where black position really crumple. How dangerous this position is for the black. Let's continue with one of the most natural move in this position, namely bishop to d7, blocking the d-file. But guess what? White will play e5 and says, somebody stop me. <laughs> the big point is, after knight takes e5 and rook takes e5, yes, white has deliberately sacrificed the rook, but just look at the fall off you get after this. 
bishop to b5, attacking on d7. So c6 is forced. Now comes another attacking jab, knight to e4. So our threat is not only attacking this bishop, but most importantly, going to the d6 square. Something black cannot prevent it. And after the obvious sequence, bishop takes g5, knight takes g5, queen to e7, white has a deciding blow. Did you spot it? Congratulations if you find the moon, knight captures f7, where black is completely losing. Of course, you cannot take with the queen because of this fork. So that is right out of the equation. And if black has to survive from this mess, then he has to play rook to a7. Whereupon white has a very simple sequence. Knight to d6 check, king to d8, knight captures b7, king to c7, and after knight to c5. Yes, black king has been completely tied down with the rook. And in order to survive, once again, he has to play this ugly move, pawn takes b5, where the end result, rook takes d7, queen takes d7, knight takes d7, and rook takes d7. Yes, at a first glance, it looks like, okay, black has equalized because he has two rook against the queen. But when white plays knight to c5, Unfortunately, black is going to lose one of his rook, as if he try to save the rook, then you get this easy checkmate. Go ahead buddy, try it, I'm showing you right now. Queen to b7, king to d6, and now lovely, smoothest mate with knight to e4. Now, before we leave, i like to quickly point out what happened at this position if your opponent allow you to play h5. And recently, I beat a 2200 in this line where he continued with knight to c6. And after h5, his idea was to play knight to d4. Okay, I play queen to d1. And he continued with knight to e7. So planning is to play d5, but first I hit his knight with bishop to e3, and after c5, just keep pressurizing this knight with knight to f3. If black take my knight, then it really help me to open the g file. So nope, my opponent, that's why I choose the move knight e to c6, defending the d knight. I simply continue with queen to d2. And after queen to a5, we have this lovely sequence. Pawn takes g6, h takes g6, and then castle, where white has finished all his development. And naturally enough, my opponent played some aggressive moves on the queen side with b5. Looks very scary, but not to worry, as white has all sorts of counterattack ready, starting with... Rook takes h8, bishop takes h8. Now I play rook to h1, attacking the bishop. Bishop to f6. Another attacking stop with bishop to g5. And please note, in all of these lines, black cannot touch my bishop, as white has a very simple threat, namely bishop takes f6 and then rook coming down on the h8 with some amazing mating concepts. So that is the reason why in the game my opponent tried queen to d8. But after my next reply, more or less the game is finished. And I hope you do find this deciding blow, queen to f4, where black is in a complete disarray. He cannot play bishop to e7 because of rook check and losing the queen. So that is right out of the equation. And in the game, he chose bishop takes g5, but after knight takes g5, he simply resigned the game, as white has multiple threat. Number one, mate on f7, and number two, rook to h8. And altogether, this is a completely lost position for the black. 
So I guess this model game gives you enough information how to play if your opponent allow you to play this thematic break H5. That's it guys. I hope you enjoy and learn this amazing monkey's bum gambit where if your opponent do capture on d4 then remember this simple idea. First you play knight to c3 and when the bishop drop back to g7 you have this lovely move h4 which gives you all sorts of attacking ideas on the black king side and as I have demonstrated in this video overall white get tremendous piece development and a significant attack for one pawn something which we are all looking in our own games there are no analysis on this line so you can literally use this line as a complete surprise weapon in the tournament practice thank you for watching this video feel free to like subscribe and comment and i will see you in my next episode very soon bye and take care